Hello everyone and welcome back to Towergate. It is Towergate day number 1013, 1013. It is January the 13th, 2020, Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the news of the day and then we'll find out about the dumbass of the week. Okay, well, it looks like, uh, let's start off here with, I guess, uh, demo commie uh, politics. It looks like... Uh, Quid Pro Quo Joe was at a Iowa rally yesterday, and uh, it looks like he had a grand total of 11 people, 11 people showing up to listen to Quid Pro Quo Joe, who we've just been told has now slipped back into fourth place in Iowa with Bernie leading. Now, this has got to be worrying uh, the, the Democratic Party big time. Uh, particularly the big donors, the people who run the party, because what they fear most, of course, is uh, Bernie. And, uh, you know, Bernie has got uh, pretty much of a, of a, I think he's got both a floor and a ceiling. I don't think a ceiling is high enough that uh, he could, on the first vote, or even when he gets to the convention, uh, have this thing locked up. I, 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 think, uh, I think if Bernie is, is your number one guy, you're looking at a brokered convention. Now, the thing is, he's kind of splitting the socialist vote with Warren, but she's not going anywhere, apparently. Uh, she's slipping. I think she hit equilibrium here uh, a couple months ago, and now she's falling back down to where she probably would be. And so you've kind of got the, the, the socialist split there, which means you could see a Bernie Warren uh, ticket emerge, and that would, and that likely would have to be what Bernie and Warren would do to have to be able to... Um, defeat the Democratic establishment who are going to be working very hard. But the Democratic establishment still believes that Warren is simply lying, that she's really not uh, a commie, and that she's just pretending to be a commie to, to win the primary, and then she'll move uh, to the center. Uh, so I think that they still believe that they can use her as a backup for Biden, because certainly when you look at what's going on with Biden, it has to be making a lot of people nervous, and I think that they see Warren as the a backup that if Biden fails, and maybe that, and I think that's because they believe they know that. Well, they know she's not really uh, the commie Bernie is, but she's just trying to placate his voters to try to pull them into her camp. And then once she gets a nomination, she would move to the center. I think that that's the plan. So it's unclear at this point exactly how that would work out. It's it's just not that easy to do. You know these people who are the activist type in the left wing of the Democratic Party are not that stupid. Uh, they know Bernie is the true believer, and they, many of them know that Warren is a fraud. Uh, you know, so, uh, and, and Warren then has also put herself so far to the left in the primaries that I think there's a lot of big donors, uh, Wall Street types, uh, Democrats, who, who don't want anything to do with, with uh, Warren. In fact, they've already put out uh, that message to the DNC, hey, if you nominate Warren, don't don't come looking uh, to us for money and support. So you can see, I mean, this is like a train wreck that you can see coming, you know, miles and miles away. We, it, it, this is all telling us that the DNC convention is going to be an absolute freak show. It's likely going to be a brokered convention. Now, Bernie would actually be the beneficiary. If, if Biden falters... And, and they're putting their money on Warren, uh, Bernie will likely go in with more votes than Warren, which means he would get the top slot if they were to try to team up and and try to be Bernie with uh, Warren as his VP. I think that uh, that would be backfiring on the DNC because I think they still kind of see Warren as the backup to Biden. So you you know there has to be a lot of very nervous people there at the DNC uh, when they see that Biden is faltering the way that he is. They don't know where uh, Warren is going to come down. They don't know if she's, you know, where she's going to go. Um, and uh, they see Bernie has got that solid base of support. It's not a big enough one uh, really to win the majority and go in uh, as the nominee. He would go into a brokered convention not having enough votes to clearly win, but he would be the top uh, or at the top of the people vying for the brokered convention. And so you can see, I can tell you right now, even being this far out from the convention, that we are looking at most likely a brokered convention. Unless somebody does something that throws this race uh, into another, you know, 
uh, plane, uh, if things continue as they are now, looking at it the way it is, you're looking at a brokered convention, and anything can happen in a brokered convention. But with Biden just drawing 11 people uh, in his rally that he did just two days ago in Iowa, he had less than 50. This guy can't, you know, you can't be only drawing 11 people uh, sitting at fourth place in Iowa. And, you know, like I said, Biden cannot afford to lose badly in the first two primaries. If he does, this entire uh, air of, uh, of he's the front runner thing disappears. <clears throat> and that's all he's writing on right now. He is writing on this this myth that he is the the front runner, and maybe national polling is backing that up. But when you look at the polling in the primary states, and that that's where it's going to count uh, initially. You know, Biden cannot afford to finish lower than third place in the first two primaries, and exp and, and not expect that to uh, seriously uh, degrade him. Uh, at that point, people will start looking around for an alternative, and for some, it may be Klobuchar. It may could be could be uh, some people think Warren. Uh, it's really hard to say, but one thing's for sure: looking at it even this far out, you can see that this is likely a brokered convention, and this is uh, it's going to be a it's what's going to be funny for all of us, and we're going to have a great time. But if you're a Democrat, oh, <laughs> it's disaster, and I think they know what's coming. Well, we had Devin Nunes on Maria Bartiromo. Um, Sunday morning, and of course he pointed out uh, that the that the new head of the FISA court is an Obama era DOJ uh, person whose name is David Chris K R I S. Now he's actually the guy that's going to be in charge of implementing the reforms that the FBI will be making to the FISA application process. But keep this in mind, as Devin Nunes points out, Chris. Uh, this David Chris is a hardcore anti-Trump activist who wrote articles lying about Trump and Nunes himself. And he's also was a strong defender of the dirty cops at the FBI. And this is the guy that they're going to bring in to be in charge of implementing the reforms? You're inviting the fox in to guard the hen house. This is how bad it is. But what's important about this is that after explaining this to Maria Bartiromo, Nunes said, you know what? I mean, at this point, we're going to be voting uh, to continue the FISA court. I think it's in February or March. And he said, it looks like at this point that it's not going to be reauthorized. It's likely not going to be reauthorized. Now, Devin Nunes, despite everything that's happened, up until this time, or maybe within a couple weeks ago, um, he's been a strong advocate for the FISA court. He says, oh, we, we need the FISA court. We, we got to have the FISA court. It's real important. We got to have it. Uh, but we got to clean up this mess. We got to we got to hold people accountable. We got to create some new rules. We got to do some different things. But now, as a result of this latest move and another move we're about to talk about here in just a second, um, Devin Nunes has now moved over into the camp of no, we're not going to reauthorize. I'm not going to vote to reauthorize the FISA court. We should scrap the whole thing, start completely over with a new type of system, and uh, just lay out a completely new system and let this FISA court law just go away. Let it die. So now you've pushed Devin Nunes to the point where even he, who's been a hawk on the FISA court forever, has finally come to the conclusion that he just doesn't think it works anymore as a result of putting this guy, David Chris, who actually went after Devin Nunes uh, and uh, accused him of lying. Uh, of course, as I mentioned, he also was an anti-Trumper, uh, the whole nine yards. So now it looks like uh, Devin Nunes, who is the ranking member of the House Intelligence Committee, a longtime advocate for FISA court, now looks like he's a no vote. And uh, he's not alone. There's a whole bunch of those. I don't see him getting the votes to reauthorize the FISA court unless some people go to jail. That's bottom line. It's pretty much what Nunes and others are saying. <clears throat> but on top of that, uh, he notes that Christopher Ray, uh, no shit Sherlock Ray, uh, the current uh, director of the uh, Federal Bureau of I'm With Her, wrote a 
letter to the FISA court apologizing for spying on Carter Page and talking about the fact that uh, he was going to implement these changes and the whole nine yards, what we just talked about. But that letter that he signed, that he sent to the FISA court, was co-signed by Dana Bowente. <laughs> oh my God. You can't make this shit up. Co-signed by David Buente, Dana Buente. And, of course, Dana Buente is the same dirty, rotten scoundrel who signed off on the Carter Page FISA warrant. So Ray writes a letter apologizing for spying on Carter Page, promises he's going to implement these 40 new changes for the FBI uh, for taking things to the FISA court, and the guy that co-signs it is the guy, one of the guys, who signed off on one of the FISA warrants to spy on Carter Page. <laughs> and, of course, they've just put the guy, uh, who's an anti-Trumper, an activist, hates uh, Nunes, defends the FBI. He's now in charge of implementing those, those uh, changes to the FISA court. I mean, it's both ends. They get you coming and going. I mean, no, this, this kind of stuff, I mean, this just shows you how, I guess it's arrogance, or else they think that we're ignorant. Maybe they think that, and I, maybe they're right. I think they probably are right. I mean, most people don't sit around and watch my Towergate videos. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, I would say it's probably correct that most people in the country, if you went out and asked 100 people randomly, maybe one out of 100 would actually know who Dana Buente is, would actually know what he did would actually know about any of the stuff that we talk about on Towergate as, as, as it relates to Spygate. People are just tuned out. So for that reason, uh, the deep state can go ahead and do things like this and think, yeah, well, we're going to piss off about 1% of the people who actually pay attention, but screw them. The other 99% are in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I mean, any member of Congress who votes to reauthorize the FISA court should be immediately uh, or at the next opportunity voted out. You, you, you cannot go vote for anyone who would support reauthorizing the FISA court based on what we're learning here today and what we have learned over the past three years about the FISA court, which I've known for a very long time. Many of you have as well. We've just been putting up with it, but they finally get caught with their hand in the cookie jar not just making mistakes or what have you, little mistakes, actually huge mistakes, big, big crimes. And the very criminals who are a part of the big crime are the people that they're going to bring in to oversee the improvement process. <laughs> like we're supposed to believe that. I mean, it's just, it's, this is really hard to believe. Uh, so, yeah, this is, this, this is, this is not going to work. And I'll be watching that very, very closely. Uh, I'm going to come down on anyone. Well, Republican. I'm not talking about Democrats. Republicans, any Republican who votes to authorize the FISA court is really, really going to come down on my bad side. And I don't see it happening now. I don't see it happening. Well, you know, we've been talking the uh, last couple of days about some of these investigations, what's going on with these investigations. And um, I think there's this feeling that everything is riding on Barr and Durham. Now, a lot is riding on Barr and Durham. And I think for myself, I can't speak for any of you, but I'm at least moderately confident based on everything that I've learned and everything that I've seen and heard from Barr and Durham that they will hold the guilty uh, people accountable. That's my belief that 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 I believe that will happen. <clears throat> but I'm not putting all my eggs in that basket. I mean, all my eggs pretty much are in Trump's basket. I mean, I kind of feel like, yeah, Barr and Durham are important figures here, and I I certainly hope and I pretty much believe they will do the right thing and hold the criminal conspirators accountable, but. That's not where a lot of my faith lies that the, that the people are going to be held accountable. 
my faith is really in Trump because he has come out so many times and talked about the fact that his greatest accomplishment will be draining the swamp. And I'm pretty sure he's talking about holding the perps accountable. And the way I look at it is that <clears throat> Trump is the ultimate decider here. I mean, let's just say, for example, Barr and Durham do decide to do a cover-up operation here, and they don't bring the conspirators to, to justice. Well, Trump's holding the Trump card. Because if that happens, uh, Trump will, will likely say, okay, fine, you guys can't uh, get the job done. That's okay. I'm going to get the truth out at the very least. And then he can release all of those declassified materials. Now, he gave Attorney General Barr the right to declassify and release anything that he, that he wants. But, of course, Barr isn't really releasing anything. I'm sure he's declassifying anything that Durham needs. But he's not releasing it yet because Durham's investigation is still ongoing. But in the event that Barr and Durham come up short and don't get the job done, I would fully expect that Trump will, at that point, just release everything. So we'll at least get the truth and it will make Barr and Durham look really, really bad because Trump will release the evidence that they had, that they would have ignored, and everyone will know it. So, in a way, Trump kind of has an insurance policy against Barr and Durham, or something at least to hold their feet to the fire. Because the, the reason Trump was told not to release stuff in the past is because first it was the Mueller investigation, then it was that investigation, and this investigation, now it's the Durham investigation. But once Durham is done, they'll no longer be able to say, well, Mr. President, you shouldn't release that stuff because it could interfere with the investigation or whatever. Once the investigation's over, then Trump can say, okay, well, the investigation's over, now, uh, I expect at that point we should get a lot of things released, but in the event that Barr and Durham do not do their job, Trump can always say, fine, all that stuff I declassified, I'm releasing it all, and there's no reason not to. All the investigations are over. You're all telling us it's all good. If it's all good, there's no problem. I'm releasing everything, and I think he will. I, I don't think Trump is going to let Barr and Durham sell, it, sell him up short. And uh, I just get that feeling. That, that Trump is not that stupid. We haven't talked personally to Barr. We don't know about the private conversations that have gone on between Trump and Barr. I mean, tr yeah, Trump and Barr. But Trump does, and he's given us certain, certain assurances that Barr is going to take care of the job. Uh, so, obviously, I'm a little skeptical sometimes because what's happening with Michael Flynn, he's allowing that to happen. Uh, we don't know. We, it sounds like the Huber investigation is over, but maybe not so much, uh, maybe not with the uh, DOJ and, and DC, maybe just with Durham or, or I mean with uh, Huber, but we don't know. It's just a couple of news reports that came out. I'm not 100% sure. I still don't really have any faith in Durham. I'm not counting on, I mean, uh, um, Huber. I have no faith in Huber whatsoever. I never did. But, um, but I don't know that some of the stuff wouldn't fall into the purview of Durham or that Hillary's totally off the, off the hook and there's nothing else being looked at. I'm not 100% sure about that. I just don't know. But getting back to the Spygate thing, I do think that uh, Trump is not going to let the criminals get away with what they did. So my faith is in Trump and the fact that he will do what he has to do to make sure these people are brought to justice. And I think Barr probably knows that. I don't think, and Durham probably to some extent knows that as well, and uh, I don't think that they really believe that Trump's going to let them get away with running a year or so long investigation and then letting everybody off the hook when we have had so much evidence come out of all the crimes they committed after what they did to Papagalopoulos and Flynn and these other people just for, you know, a false statement or a misstatement or what have you. So... I just don't think it's going to be go quite that smoothly, but I would say if you don't have faith in Barr and Durham, you should certainly have faith in Trump. He's not going to let them get away with it. Well, uh, we're learning now from, uh, from some uh, emails that people are now getting around to looking at from the IG report <clears throat> that now shows that it was the dishonorable James Comey who wanted the Golden Showers story put into the ICA. McCabe also wanted it into the ICA. And in fact, McCabe 
was arguing to have it put into the main body of the ICA. And apparently uh, the intelligence community, which would be Brennan and Clapper, were wanted it in the ICA, but they wanted it put into an appendix, which is eventually what happened. It eventually ended up in an appendix, but it did end up in the ICA, and these new emails show that it was Comey and McCabe 100% pushing for it to be in the main body of the um, ICA, and Brennan and Clapper were arguing to put it into the uh, appendix. So that is what is being learned from the most recent emails from uh, the Inspector General's report. So I imagine that there's probably more to this story uh, here. Uh, we'll just have to find out. But of course, Brennan had been arguing at this point that it wasn't a part of the ICA at all and that he didn't even see it, uh, the steel material, until December. Of course, Clapper has said just the opposite uh, of that. So with these four guys, Clapper, Brennan, Comey, and McCabe, all saying different things, it's really hard to know. But according to the IG report, it was Comey definitely wanted it into the main body, as did uh, McCabe wanted it in the main body the uh, Golden Shower story, or the PP Gate story, whatever you're going to call it, uh, in the ICA, and that Brennan and Clapper were wanting it into the appendix, which is where it eventually ended up. So, does that clear anything up for you? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Not really. They're just, you know, they're just, uh, you know, I don't know if that will ever be cleared up because I don't know that you will ever get the truth out of any of these people. I really don't. I mean, you can put them under oath, put them in front of a grand jury. Uh, I think that they'll lie where they can and they'll you know uh, I, I don't think I'm, I don't think they'll ever come out and really tell the truth I guess is what I'm trying to say I'm not looking for that uh, you're almost gonna have to find all the evidence and just get them in a position where they simply ha have no choice because they're, they're just caught and you've got the evidence I think Durham is gonna have to actually prove every single thing that he wants to, to prosecute because I don't think any of these people are ever going to come clean. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the dumbass of the week. <clears throat> Brian Larkin, he's going to go with Madame Botox, uh, the Hollywood celebs, of course, uh, once again making fools of themselves over the past uh, two weeks, and Bernie, Kami Bernie. Michael Vaughn, he's going to go with Soleimani. Soleimani. Lee. Lee is going to go with Pete Losi, A.G. Barr, and Matt Gates. Yes, that's right, Matt Gates. Never thought I'd see his name pop up in a dumbass of the week. He's one of my favorite congressmen. I'm sure a lot of you guys like him too, but I agree. His recent vote with the Democrats to limit the president's authority is, I mean, I kind of understand the some of that, but wrong vote, wrong time. Wrong fight on the wrong hill at the wrong time for Matt Gates. Uh, I'm not sure... My guess is he's going to probably regret that. Um, next we have JoJo, who's going to go with all of the corporate mainstream media. And, of course, uh, second pick would be the Laughing Squad. Yeah, she's talking about the, the, uh, the squad laughing uh, about the uh, events uh, that have been going on in Iran uh, and, um, and the attack on our embassy. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're despicable. I mean, what more can you say? The four warm women of the... Four horsewomen of the apocalypse. Susan is going to go with Madame Botox. Friend in Liberty, the mainstream media. Iowa Stormy Deplorable Bot is going to go with John F. and Kerry, who, by the way, served in Vietnam. The Ayatollah. And Madame Botox. Jean... Gene's going to go with the Iranian leader. Uh, come and get me. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice, Gene. Well done. Uh, Omar and Lindsey Graham. I second that. Freddie Schaefer. Schaffer, I'm sorry. Freddie Schaffer. Going to go with the Dems, uh, who are uh, the Dems for attempting to, it looks like they're trying to add 
an article of impeachment. That's really nuts, but they certainly are talking about it. Uh, McConnell for not enforcing the Josh Hawley rule change. Yeah, I mean, he allows to come up for a vote. They vote for it, but it doesn't look like he's going to put it into play because that's what he should be doing on Monday. And it doesn't sound like that's what he's going to do. So I'm not really sure what's going on there with uh, Mitch, Twitch McConnell. And, of course, she finishes off with Lisa Page. Ricky Ricardo is going to go with Attorney General Barr. My, my. Attorney General Barr. People are kind of souring on him lately. And I definitely understand why. Gordon is going to go with Pelosi and Huber. Huber. Lori Holt. Madam Botox. Matt Gates. And Christopher No Shit Sherlock Ray. Oregon Outback is going to go with the Iranian field commander that launched the missile. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's definitely, uh, my guess is he's probably being tortured right now or something. I don't know, or they've already killed him or something. That was a fatal, fatal mistake, to say in the least. Uh, Michael is going to go with Pelosi, Iran, and the United States for putting up with, well, no, not the U.S., us, meaning all of us. So he's going to go with Pelosi and Iran and us for putting up with no shit Sherlock Christopher Ray. Well, you know, we really don't have any choice. <laughs> we have no choice. We got to put up with Christopher Ray. We have no, no way of getting rid of him, personally. Um, Keith Fellows will go with the Iranian army. Yep. Rocky M. Tucker is going to go with the World War Three dud. Yeah, that prediction didn't happen, did it? Uh, and the view for cheering a white supremacist. Yeah, I saw that clip of, of, of uh, Behar, you know, trying to make that argument, looking at Whoopi Goldberg's face as she was realizing that Behar was actually, in a way, uh, certainly cheering this white supremacist. I mean, it was, it was kind of crazy, <laughs> to be honest with you. Uh, but she's not very smart. Uh, that lady Behar, she's she's pretty dumb. Uh, let's see. Stage Door Johnny is going to go with Omar, Warren, and Huber. Sue Sung will go with Pelosi, Mike Lee. There's another one that kind of acts crazy on a regular basis. And Meghan Markle. Yeah, Meghan Markle. She's a real treat. Huh. I don't even have time to go into that. I've pretty much tried to avoid that whole story. But that's pretty crazy what's going on there. You know, um, I kind of get that you know, they want to break away from the uh, royal family and not have all, all, all that stuff going on and be a part of all that anymore. But I guess the thing I would say is they want to get away from all the royalty and all the, you know, pomp and circumstance and get away from it all. But they don't want to get away from that $100 million line of credit uh, that they have access to. So if they were giving up everything, including the money, then I would say, now those are, those are true believers there, but they're not. They, they want the money, but they don't want it, all the stuff that you have to do to get the money uh, to pretend to be some sort of a royal. So, you know, yeah, I'm not a big fan of, of her at all, and I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, it's a little crazy. Linda Martin, she's going to go with Pelosi, Matt Gates, and Omar. American Pie, Gates. <whistles> not looking good for Matt Gates at this point. Jonathan Cassidy is going to go with the intel community, the congressional seditionist, and the media seditionist. Yeah, got them all in there, Jonathan. Well done. Peter James, our good friend in the great Northwest, is going to go with the uh, Iranians' missile defense. Yeah, and that commander who ordered the strike, who, like I say, is probably in the gulag right now. No shit, Sherlock Christopher Ray, and the mainstream media. Boy, there's three solid picks. Well done, Peter. Jenny Tweets will go with Madame Botox and Matt Gates. Mona Lisa, uh, the Soleimani supporters, I assume she's talking about MSNBC and CNN and the Democrats. Uh, Pelosi and Chuck the Cuck. We have Youngblood, he's going to go with Matt Gates and Mike Lee. <whistles> Boy. Jamie Anzavino is going to go with Pelosi, Matt Gates, and Schumer. Jeanette Bateman is going to go with Pelosi. Iran, and the mainstream media. Mr. Hollywood High. <laughs> I don't know if you read his 
comment, but you'd have to read the comment to get this, but it's going to go with himself if the future proves the past. <laughs> well done. Uh, I've nominated myself before, I think. Uh, let's see. Kimmy, uh, all, who, all who took sides with the terrorists and the Dems that let Omar speak uh, and allowed her to call for Trump's properties to be targeted. Yep. Very well done, Kimmy. Linda Thomas is going to go with Madame Botox and the Bug-Eyed Fool. Mrs. Miggins is going to go with Michael Moore. <laughs> yeah, Michael Moore writing a personal letter to the Ayatollah. As if the Ayatollah even knows who the hell Michael Moore is or would even respond to him. Maybe Michael Moore should go over to Iran and uh, present his case, make his case. <laughs> My guess is he would be stoned to death before he uh, probably got five miles from the airport as soon as they looked at him and identified him as a possible, possible transsexual. He would be dead quick. Douglas, Douglas is going to go with Mike Lee, Matt Gates, and Sarah Carter. Mm. You're being hard, hard on the, hard on the folks <laughs> this week. David Wharton is going to go with Madam Botox. Half Mile will go with Pelosi. Pelosi galore. <laughs> Pelosi galore. Yes, the, it makes a comeback. I liked it the first time I heard it. Love that. Pelosi galore. <laughs> Birdwell. All who go against the president. Yep, I'd second that one. Partly Sunny will go with the DNC. Oh yeah, they're dumbasses of the week, and believe me, <laughs> they, they've had a bad week. They've had a bunch of bad weeks, and I think they know the kind of bad week's coming up for them at the convention. It's going to be something... Really, really spectacularly bad for them. Lots of laughs for us, though. Mystic Meadows is going to go with Omar. Michael Bloomberg. Yeah, he spent 20, what, $20 million and he's, uh, uh, hasn't even secured one delegate. <laughs> Man. Uh, and the demo, demo commies will be uh, Mystic Meadows' third pick. Hey, hey is going to go with the lefties and the media. Yeah, pretty much one and the same. I kind of see them all as the same. No difference. The, the media are the lefties. <laughs> so, there you go. Well, let's tally it up. And um, I really almost am sad to report this. But, well, you know, Pelosi, you know, she's having a couple really good weeks. I think this is her third week in a row. She won Dumbass of the Week, then Dumbass of the Year. Now she's back at a handily winning Dumbass of the Week again this week, and she's probably going to win it in even grander fashion next week because this week is when the impeachment hearings are going to happen, and if it happens the way McConnell wants it to happen, it could be over like in a couple of hours, <laughs> and it could be ugly in a very short period of time, or maybe we'll get a big trial, and it will be even uglier, and she'll have to wait two more weeks uh, for it to uh, really hit home. But either way, it's a huge loss for Madam Botox she is going to come out of this thing badly damaged. All because she listened to Ocasio-Cortez. And if you remember, right after Ocasio-Cortez bitched about it for, for weeks and weeks, then Madame Botox goes ahead and lets Adam Schiff set up the star chamber. And then the very next week, uh, AOC tweets out, eh, who cares about impeachment? I'm bored with this. <laughs> By which time Pelosi's already fully committed. That was a riot. So anyway, we have Nancy Pelosi finishing first, winning Dumbass of the Week, but coming in second place, Matt Gates. Matt Gates. Ooh, Matt, you don't like coming in uh, in the top three of Dumbass of the Week on my Towergate videos. Let me tell you that, my friend. You might want to uh, work on that. And coming in number thir three, we got a three-way tie. We have a three-way tie between the mainstream media, Elon Omar, and the Iranian missile launch. There you go. Pelosi, number one. Gates, number two. Three-way tie for third between the ma mainstream media, Elon Omar, and the Iranian missile launch. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll be back tomorrow with more Towergate. Have a good night. See you. Bye.